<clears throat> I mentioned earlier that um, combustion reactions were also oxidation and reduction reactions. Sometimes, um, for shorthand, people call oxidation and reduction reactions redox reactions. So the word oxidation reduction is abbreviated redox. Don't ask me why they, they do, do the re reduction part first in the abbreviation. I don't know. It sounds better. Anyway, so um, I had mentioned earlier that combustion reactions are also oxidation reduction reactions or redox reactions. But if you look at a typical combustion reaction, um, you know, methane plus oxygen gives carbon dioxide plus water. I don't see any kind of classic metal, non-metal um, cation, anion being formed here, but rather these are all covalent um, compounds. This is a covalent compound, this is a covalent element, covalent compound, covalent. They're all non-metals coming together, um, sharing electrons um, to form these molecules that we call covalent um, compounds or molecules. So um, how do I know, how can I look at this and know that electrons have been transferred? Um, because I told you that it was an oxidation reduction reaction or redox reaction. Well, as it turns out, in the case of um, ionic compounds, in this classic kind of metal, non-metal situation, it's really easy to tell if electrons have been transferred. It's how the, the, the compounds are made. But in the, um, in the molecular species, it's very difficult. And so what um, scientists have done in order to recognize, be able to recognize um, uh, oxidation reduction reactions and be able to recognize that electron transfer, electron transfer is occurring is they have devised this method called um, using oxidation numbers. Okay? And so what you do is you identify, and this is a list of rules, you have this system of identifying oxidation numbers for each element within a compound across a chemical change. And if the oxidation numbers change, um, that tells you that indeed that particular change is a uh, oxidation reduction type change. Okay, so let me, let me run through the rules and I'll go back and show you how it works. Um, the oxidation number of an uncombined element is always zero. So for example, um, in the case of this, um, these elements, the oxidation numbers would be zero. Okay, now an oxidation number, let me tell you this, is different than a charge. Um, in the case of a, uh, a, an element that's a, just an atom, an uncombined atom element, um, the uh, oxidation number is the same as the charge. For example, the magnesium has no charge and its oxidation number is assigned as zero. Um, <clears throat> the oxidation numbers um, for cations and anions that are just elemental cations and anions really are also the charge. That means that that particular ion carries that, that charge the same as the oxidation number. But in the case of um, uh, elements that are in compounds that are covalent compounds, the oxidation number is just sort of a placeholder to say um, in this compound uh, most of the electrons are housed on this or the other um, electron or, or excuse me atom closer to or further away from this particular atom or that particular atom. And so more of the negative charge um, might reside on that particular atom in that particular compound, but it doesn't um, physically have the same um, meaning as literally a charge, meaning an unbalance of electrons on a particular species. Okay, So it, it's, it's a, a, a device, a way to keep track of how electrons are moving around a chemical change, but it doesn't have the same physical significance unless it's actually on an ionic compound with ions already. So um, the oxidation number of an uncombined element is zero. The sum of the oxidation numbers of all the atoms in a species is equal to this total charge. For example, in magnesium oxide, um, the total charge on that formula unit is zero. So the sum of the charges, which we would call now oxidation numbers, um, is zero as well, plus two minus two. The oxidation number of hydrogen is always plus one in combination with nonmetals and always minus one in combination with metals. That's just a rule that you need to remember that helps you assign the oxidation numbers on all the other species in a particular compound. The oxidation numbers of elements in group 1 and 2 is equal to their group number, which is the same as their charge. The oxidation number of halogens is minus 1, um, and in uh, ionic compounds, you know that's really always truly the charge, but in, um, unless it's in combination of oxygen or another halogen higher in the group. And then the oxidation number of fluorine is minus 1 in all of its compounds. So minus 1 is going to control it um, to be minus 1, but sometimes um, chlorine and bromine um, and 
might have different oxidation numbers other than minus one. We'll see some examples. The oxidation number of oxygen is minus two in most of its compounds. There's exceptions when it's combined with fluorine, um, in which case it's going to have a positive value and as a peroxide or superoxide, but we're not going to do any examples like that in this class, so don't worry about it. Okay, so let's, let's practice this. Let's go back now. Using these rules, let's see how this really is a redox reaction by assigning the oxidation numbers. Okay, first of all, they said um, uh, uncombined elements is always zero. And when we um, label oxidation numbers, we always put it in a little circle to indicate we're not talking about the actual raw charge. We're talking about this, um, this um, method that we label um, different elements within compounds to label their oxidation numbers to, to detect whether or not they, they are undergoing um, electron transfer across their change. All right. The other rule that helps us is the oxidation number of hydrogen is plus one when it's with nonmetals. So in this case, the hydrogen is plus one. Okay. Now there's four of them. So when we go to see what, uh, car uh, what, what is the oxidation number of carbon, we have to recognize that there's four hydrogens with plus one charge. Now carbon can be a lot of different oxidation numbers. It depends on what it's paired with. In this case, it's paired with four hydrogens. And the rule is that the total... Let me see, the sum of oxidation numbers of all the atoms in a species is equal to its total charge. The total charge of methane is zero. So if the total charge is equal to zero, and I know that I have four plus ones from the hydrogen, then what, we'll just let x be carbon, what must be the charge on carbon? If you solve for x, x equals minus four. So the charge on, on the carbon is a minus four. Okay? So four minus four is zero. Then if you move over to this side, the other basic rule that helps keep you straight is that oxygen always has an oxidation number of minus two. So I, I label the oxygen, and then based on what the oxygen is, I'm going to figure out the carbon kind of using the same technique. I don't know what carbon is. I know that I have two atoms with a minus two oxidation number, and I know the whole thing has to add up to zero. So in this case, the oxidation number is plus four. Okay. All right. Whoops. Plus four. Whoops, 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 whoops. I think she knew what happened. Um, plus four. Um, okay, and then in this case, we have uh, water, which is minus two for the oxygen. Hydrogen is always plus one, and that just works out plus two minus two equals zero. Okay, so that's how we label oxidation numbers. You're going to have to just practice, look at the rules back and forth, and practice. So, um, what I'd like for you to do before we talk about, you know, is this a redox reaction? Um, what you're going to be looking for to identify whether or not something is a redox reaction is, is there a change in the oxidation numbers across the chemical change? And if there's a change in the oxidation numbers, that means electrons have been transferred from one species to another. 